in the good old days, uh, it was much easier. You had a traditional sales order, right? Uh, and you 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 posted, uh, you send an invoice for your license uh, fee, your software license, for instance. You gave an order confirmation. You made sure the people had the software installed. You send an invoice. You got the payment, and then you archive the payment. And uh, the only discussion there was like, okay, how long do we need to keep uh, archive of this? Because you know you never have to speak with them again because it was a done deal. Yeah. Whereas in a recurring business, you want to keep that relationship. Um, and for that, usually the classic solutions were just used a CRM to try and close the deal and the ERP to ultimately invoice the deal and register the customer for the audit trail and the finance purposes. If you look at the subscription landscape, it's a bit of a more colorful and uh, full picture, I would say. Uh, so you have, you have to do with the new business, so all the new deals, uh, but also once they're a customer, you have upsells, downsells. Uh, milestones for those who don't, do not know is, is you sometimes have a customer that st starts their contract on the 1st of March, but they start paying on the 1st of April because they are only going live in April or they negotiated an one or three months free of charge. That's what we call milestones. And of course, you manage the renewals within a contract. There's a, a lot of things happening. Uh, you know, you could, could have some usage based billing. Uh, things can change. Uh, you have some uh, cancellations of subscriptions. And all of that, of course, triggers recurring invoicing, recurring payment, and recurring revenue recognition. So you have to monitor also how you split out that revenue recognition. And in this world, the classical CRM and uh, ERP mix doesn't do anymore. So you have a subscription management solution instead of that, uh, which ideally, and uh, we see that a lot as well, is also connected to your own SaaS application. So if you have, for instance, any users usage uh pay as you go kind of pricing models it's really cool to link your own product to union or any subscription management solution to make sure that that's also included in the automatic billing uh, of things um for those interested we have a blog uh which i think her uh, can share with you somewhere it will pop up on your screen i think um if you want to read more on like you know when is this single source of truth really necessary for me um and then you can also uh, Find out if it's the time for you, or maybe not yet, or maybe uh, it's overdue, could also be the case. Then if we take it even one step further, um, this is a, like the previous picture, but all around it, you start with an initial order, then it could be so that there's some usage, some pay-as-you-go, some credits, an X number of API calls a customer can make that needs to be invoiced monthly in arrear, for instance, uh, including the upfront agreed fees, then you have an invoice, then you have a payment, and then if it's not canceled, you go all the way around. Uh, product pricing changes could happen, right? You have to launch a new price plan, you uh, launch a new module, which is monetized. Uh, the subscription changes because of that, and that needs to be managed, and then it comes to renewal again. And that keeps going around. That's why I guess they call it the circular economy. Um, which makes sense. Uh, and of course, once it's canceled, if it gets canceled, you go to archive uh, and then it's stored. If you wanna take that even further in B2B land, um, you get some refunds every now and then, credit notes, they ordered an add-on, it's not to their liking, they wanna cancel it. Uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, not allow them to cancel it and make your customer disappointed or are you gonna credit it? You need to be able to prorate that. Um, you want to do something about sales commissions and partner commissions. Also, sales commissions on the uh, and partner commissions on recurring business can be completely different than what it used to be, right? You had maybe like an X percent of a deal vo uh, volume. What is the deal volume? Is the customer sticks for three years? Do you give every three year a sales commission? You know, those kind of things need to be managed and process decisions need to be made with that. Um, you, of course, have some service provisioning and self-service for your customers so they can see their own invoice when it's paid and the statuses or, you know, make it easy for them to uh, view their subscription. Um, you have indexation and renewal uplift. So maybe, you know, you have value-based pricing that increases when your customer increases in something. Um, you have to uh, manage your product life cycle and you, of course, measure maybe their license. So, you know, are you actually using the 12 users you acquired or maybe you're using 15 and we need to send you a prorated invoice for three. Um, of course, the subscription changes should trigger renewal opportunities to make sure you work with them carefully. And then last but not least comes the reporting and the insighting of all of that. So all of this is happening. It's a lot that's happening. 
and you don't want to go into every single contract to see what has happened. So you need some sort of visibility, some sort of business mirror, which tells you, you know, how am I doing um, to be used both internally for your management meetings and uh, and also externally for maybe, you know, founders or um, venture capitals or uh, private equity owners, uh, whatever. Um, really important to uh, measure all of that. So uh, it's not that easy to run a subscription business, unfortunately, uh, but it's uh, what we do.